Today is a good day. Today is a Strix day. The pro gaming obsessed motherboard is back to shame its competition and shame them in style. And maybe I should just bring it down a, a notch. It's good looking, it's imposing, and it is here to tease. Today we are reviewing the Rock Strix Z690F Gaming, an unapologetic brat who bests its competition every single year and take control of the latest tech of the moment to render one of the most elegant and agile gaming experience a motherboard can bring. Two minutes earlier. Mm. Oh. God, ah, is good. Now, Strix is a lineup of entry level of motherboards in the ROG universe. There are three of them which slightly differ um, in terms of specs and price point. And what you really need to understand about Strix motherboard is that they have an almost cult level following. They are Z Pro Gamer motherboards. And this year, this release is so different from anything we've seen before because the Z690 Strix does not accumulate one or two, but three major updates altogether. First, the introduction of the PCI 5.0 standard, then comes the highly anticipated DDR5 RAM arrival, and the landing of Intel Revival processor. It's 10 nanometer star, the larger than life Alder Lake core processor. And basically the Strix is experiencing an in-depth um, re-engineering, forcing some rethinking coming from Asus team in order to tweak and tune all these new standards into a gaming obsessed product. Curious yet? Now, starting with the obvious. We're dealing with a six-layered ATX motherboard, exactly what I was expecting for a PCIe 5.0 motherboard to operate, since six PCB layers is exactly what you need to properly insulate PCIe signal and uh, avoid uh, signal interferences with the different motherboard's components. Now, one interesting note concerning the PCB frame itself. There are some nice gaming uh, references which will keep you interested. For example, the Control plus WASD reference here, which uh, if you Google it will redirect you to some weird gaming controversy, or the Goeman City reference, which will undoubtedly keep you awake at night. A fun touch coming from Asus, which, uh, you know, will definitely make gamers feel right at home and uh, part of the tech moment. Now, CPU socket wise, Strix boards are powered by the brand new LGA 1700 CPU socket, supporting both 12th and 13th generation of Intel Core processors. That is 500 more pins than available on its predecessing LGA1200 CPU socket. A jump partly explained by the new Intel CPU increased core counts and superior bandwidth abilities. Now, talking of which, the new Intel processors introduced PCI 5.0 bandwidth standard, meaning that our Strix motherboard is now juggling with no less than three different PCIe standards all at once. PCIe 3.0, which delivers one gigabyte per second per PCIe lane, PCIe 4.0, which doubles that, and now the PCIe 5.0, which redoubles that to 4 gigabyte per second per PCIe lanes. Obviously, that is a massive amount of available bandwidth for our gamers and, and, and you know, whatever components, but truth be told, the PCIe 5.0 standard is right now at least absolutely entirely completely useless we do not yet have any pci 5.0 enabled hardware video cards or others and frankly talking um, even the most expensive gpu out there can barely go beyond the pci 3.0 standard let alone the pci 4. so yeah having a pci 5.0 standard is more of a marketing stand than anything else and but but i'll say that solid solid future proofing for, I don't know, at least three to four years to come. Now, VRM wise, this is where Intel's new microarchitecture, Alder Lake, really transformed our Z690 motherboards. We have 17 70 amps power stages organized in an 8 plus 1 parallel phases configuration. This is 1190 amps to not only run, but also severely overclock your gremlin of a processor. 140 amps more than found on its predecessor, but in par with the new CPU demands, which comes with a much higher core count than its Skylake predecessor and some serious 
um, overclocking potential. Now, cooling-wise, the VRM comes with several attributes going for itself. First, having several power stages allow a wider load spread, meaning less heat concentration on every individual MOSFET. And obviously, the Strix passive cooling blocks are absolutely stunning. We got this large, tall, rather good-looking VRM blocks linked by a balancing copper heat pipe. Again, they are quite imposing and show off a real nice brush finish. The main blocks comes with a large radiating roof here to improve heat dissipation. Now both blocks come with a double contact design allowing a thermo padded contact to both MOSFETs and chokes for a fast heat evacuation. In real world temperatures monitoring, results show the Strix Z90 Gaming F to be top of its class in terms of VRM efficiency. With a serially overclocked i7-12700K and a long-lasting synthetic load, at no point did the VRM go beyond 50 degrees Celsius, which obviously is exemplary. One of the most efficient VRM available today on the market. And again, uh, one aspect which will severely challenge the more expensive uh, Maximus 14 Hero, but something we will talk when I review that board. On the downside, having higher profile VRM blocks also means less space for your CPU coolers and as the 690 powered motherboards go, a lot of otherwise compatible CPU coolers won't fit your new board. Yet another cost to add uh, to the list <laughs> if you really want to upgrade towards a Z690 powered build. RAM wise, well, there is a big upgrade coming with the Strix, DDR5 RAM memory. Now, very quickly, DDR5 RAM can swap about 50% more data than DDR4 RAM at similar clock speeds, and in addition, can achieve much, much faster clocks than its predecessor, further increasing its speed differential with DDR4 memory. Obviously, a major source of performance boost and one of the biggest incentive to finance it, obviously. Now, our board can support up to 128GB of DDR5 RAM, clockable up to a novel and ludicrous 6.4GHz. Most importantly, note that this motherboard is not backward compatible, so do not try to install DDR4 RAM on this motherboard, anyway, it won't fit, and if you really try to push it through, you'll either damage your board or your RAM models. Now, storage-wise, the Strix Z690 Gaming F can accommodate up to four M.2 solicit drives running up to PCIe 4 standard individually, meaning data swaps up to 64 gigabit per second each, a massive jump and a grade when compared with the dual PCIe 4.0 M.2 solicit drive its previous iteration could support. Obviously, M.2 solicit drives can get really hot really quickly, but thankfully, Asus has shown some unprecedented cares towards the heat shields, which are impressive thick and have received a beautiful and luxurious brush finish. Now worth noting, they all have a single quality thermal pad, with a noticeable exception of the CPU connected M.2 solid state drive, which is the only one to get a dual sided thermal pad. Now on that CPU connected M.2 solid state drive, the fact that there is a double dual thermal pad and that it is the only one benefiting from this feature and also being connected to the PCIe 5.0 reservoir lane of our processor makes me believe that maybe in the near future that connector will be able to support PCIe 5.0 enabled M.2 solid state drives. Now, before we move on, I want to mention what I think is a real star of this board, the screwless M.2 solid state drive locking mechanism. I first spotted this on the Tough Z590 I reviewed six months ago, and I am delighted to see that Asus decided to include it on most of its Z690 motherboards. Now, SATA-wise, without any surprises, we still have our good old aging aching yet operating SATA 3.0 plugs, Relic tech coming from another age, but still adding some <sighs> calm reliability uh, to our otherwise bombastic motherboards. I'm gonna be nice about it. Now, back IO-wise. First, let me note the presence of a permanent back plate, which was totally expected at that price range. And starting from the left, we have a 1.4 display port as well as a 2.1 HDMI display output for our integrated graphics, two second generation USB plugs, a clear CMOS and a flash BIOS button, great for CPU-less BIOS update and recovery. Next, we have four 5 gigabit third generation USB plugs, four 10 gigabit 3.2 USB plugs, including two type C's, a 2.5 gigabit per second search protected LAN, a Wi-Fi 6E dual band adapter able to broadcast on the cleaner and new 6GHz radio spectrum, and finally, 
will take latest 8-channel audio codec, the excellent ALC4080. In other words, gaming and broadcast experience is absolutely great and that's easily explainable by the fact that both left and right audio channel have been traced on dedicated PCB sheets increasing their insulation against statics interferences of all kind. In addition, our audio codec has been equipped with no less than seven Nikicon capacitors to kidney filter any statics out of your sound experience, pure and distilled ear candy. Uh, now overall nothing really groundbreaking when it comes to back it's, it's, it's very well featured, it's complete, but it's <laughs> specs to specs, identical than its predecessor, the Strix Z590 Gaming F. There's absolutely nothing different here, which is not a bad thing since it was really, I think, a good one and a little bit in advance on its time. Chipset-wise, because that's mostly why we're here, we got Intel's first PCIe 4.0 supported chipset. It has more bandwidth, more lanes than its predecessor, but most noticeably, the Z690 chipset manages to deliver PCIe 4.0 standard bandwidth levels on a very cold 6 watts heat footprint, half of what AMD managed to do, and the infamous reason why AMD had to equip most of its X570 motherboards with expensive, sometimes noisy chipset fans, or more recently with very large imposing and still expensive heat shields. In comparison, the Z690 heat shield is much smaller in area, costs less, and does a great job at keeping the chipset below 45 degrees Celsius at all time, which is where you want it to be for a long-lasting motherboard. In short, uh, the Z690 chipset makes PCIe 4.0 standard a more uh, uh, market-ready, more mature uh, technology and something that is now obviously easier to implement and propagate all around, even on cheaper motherboards. Now, expansion-wise, we got three expansion slots, one bachelor and two PCIe 16 slots with different amounts of lanes. As usual, only the closest one to your CPU has 16 PCIe lanes, therefore this is where you'd want your GPU for optimal performances hence the metallic reinforcements. In addition, and for the first time ever, it operates at PCIe 5 standard, meaning it can swap up to a ludicrous 64 gigabytes per second, dwarfing the naked 16 slots, which operates only at four lanes at PCIe 3 standards, meaning four gigabytes per second only. But like I said earlier, benefits of having a PCIe 5.0 slot is simply inexistent as of today, other than offering some solid future proofing. And finally, how not to talk about Asus' very own and, and very first PCIe opening mechanism that they so sensually called the slot <laughs> release. I'm sorry. Small yet highly functional upgrade brought here by Asus, which will uh, ease the life of first time builder as much as upgraders alike. And I have to say, I got to give it to Asus. They are redefining a lot of things this year uh, with really great quality built and small, really well thought out functions such as this one. So definitely Big, great, engineering kudos to Asus for this. Now, front panel connector wise, well, here we have nothing new whatsoever. We got our usual two USB second generation front panel connectors for monitoring, a five gigabit third generation front panel connector and a 10 gigabit type C, all of which were fully expected at this price range. Now, cooling wise, we got a rather generous eight PWM fan connectors, including a water pump. Obviously more than enough to provide any gaming build with a, a very very good solid airflow and, and, uh, and I'll risk myself to say even a, a very good uh, custom water cooling system but there is one thing Asus is really um, insisting on is the fact that these connectors are hydronauts connectors allowing every connector to control up to five fans individually and independently from one another sure great option great feature not sure what you would do with 35 individually connected fans on your motherboard. So, I mean, 
it's good but not necessarily indispensable. Now, troubleshooting wise, we already uh, mentioned our CMOS and BIOS flashback button on our back IO, but we also have a very useful first aid easy debugger here to signal the main stages of our boot. This is the absolute bare minimum you want to see on a motherboard that complex, which operates no less than three different PCI standards in the same time. So I guess fundamentals are checked. Now, BIOS-wise, we got the first real refresh I have seen in a couple of years. The fonts are larger, menus are cleaner, and options more spaced. And I like that. It is extremely stable, as far as I can tell, very quick to respond, and absolutely familiar to operate. Overclocking-wise, being a Z690 chipset and a ROG, obviously you have been given full control, which you should be using instead of Asus' own so-called AI overclocker, which will shamelessly overvolt your processor to indecent and almost dangerous voltage. And obviously this would not be a Strix motherboard without its unique sense of self-importance and a dash of RGB. Starting with a nice addressable strip hidden under our VRM main block roof and four RGB connectors, three of which are addressable. Enough RGB to compensate for uh, the most severe case of erectile dysfunction. I'm saying this, but obviously I'm saying nothing. Now, in conclusion, at about 400 bucks, the ROG Strix Z690 Gaming F is cautiously sold at the very same price tag than its predecessor and understandably so. Because even though it does uh, boast a heavily upgraded VRM, a superior finish and uh, an overall increase of performance, upgrading to a Z690 board would mean upgrading processors, buying new DDR5 RAM and potentially acquiring a new CPU cooler as well. Basically, if you already have a PC and want to upgrade to this, it's gonna cost you anywhere between a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars. Just that. And the whole question then becomes, is it worth it? Well, obviously, if you are running a gaming build bought in the past couple of years, chances are fifteen hundred bucks is just too much to upgrade, even though the Strix Z90 Gaming F comes with solid arguments. This board with everything that comes with it will mostly benefit new PC builders who have to start from scratch, and even video creators who wants to benefit from its heavily charged VRM and uh, the access to DDR5 memory. And in that case, um, the Strix Z690 Gaming F does not only brings up the NT compared to its predecessor, but is a dangerous product for Asus because this board is really that good. It could not only compete, but potentially overshadow much more expensive siblings in the very same ROG lineup. So in short, if you are a gamer looking for the best future-proofed, high-performing gaming foundation money can buy, the Strix Z690 Gaming F is THE Pro Gamer board to get this year. The gold standard that all other motherboards manufacturers will need to reckon with in just the hope of existing and where, in my opinion, your money needs to be.